Okay, it's 8 in the evening. Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, can we do a little sound check? Please type 3 if the sound is okay. 2 if you need to make it, you want me to make it louder. 1 if you're not hearing anything. <laughs> 3, 2, or 1. Okay. Great. Okay, so I'm seeing 3, so that means I think the sound is good. Okay, we're recording this for the sake of those who are not able to join us in this last session of uh, the um, pre-sessions for Latin for Erudition. Thank you so much for joining us. We go straight into the um, discussion so that we make good use of our time. And today we're going to tackle... Uh, more nouns and more verbs. Last meeting, we uh, looked into the first declension, nouns. And then today, we're going to go to second declension and first conjugation of the verbs, present tense. Okay, but before that, let's do a little Latin for erudition kind of uh, discussion. Uh, let me see. Okay, there. Here are some useful words to know. Dei in Latin is dies, okay, which is very close to the Spanish dia, as in buenos dias. Um, that's day. In fact, Mary diem is middle of the day, okay? Meridium. Now, ante meridium is before the middle of the day. And post meridium is after the middle of the day. That's why AM comes from there. Ante meridium is before the middle of the day, which is noon. Before noon is a.m. After noon is p.m. Uh, we have been using a.m. and p.m. And if you don't uh, realize it, I mean, if you don't study Latin, you won't realize that you've actually been using uh, Latin. Ante, diem, ante meridiem and post meridiem. That's the a.m. and p.m. Septimana. You remember when we learned counting? Unus, duo, tres, quatuor, quinque, sex, septem, seven. And septimana is seven days. Month is menses. And yes, that's where we get the word mens <laughs> for, for the monthly visitation. Year is anus. That's where we get English words like annual, annuity. Okay. And then we go to the days. Which, if you don't uh, study Latin, you don't realize, Uy, they're all based on the, the stars, the planets. Monday is, in Latin, dies lune. Okay? Day of the moon. Spanish, lunes. <laughs> Tuesday is dies martis. Day of Mars. A day dedicated to... Mars, <laughs> Martis, Martes in Spanish. Wednesday is Dies Mercuri. That's for Wednesday, but we don't have, but that's Day of Mercury. Huh? Thursday is Day of Jovis, which is Latin for Jupiter. Friday is Dies Veneris, Viernes in Spanish. And that is day devoted to Venus. Saturday is Dies Saturni or Sabatum. That's day of Saturn. And then Sunday is really Dies Solis, day of the sun. But because it was on that day that um, our Lord rose from the dead, now we also refer to it as Dies Dominica, the day of the Lord. Okay, so that's Latin for Monday to Sunday. 
And then, January is Januarius, which if later on you study more words in Latin, you will realize Janua means gate, the entrance, because Januarius is the entrance to the rest of the year, the entrance to the year. February is Februarius. March is Martius. Take note of the pronunciation. T followed by I and another vowel. It's like as if there is a letter S there. Martius. April is Aprilis. Aprilis. May is Maius. June is Junius. July is Julius, and this we talked about um, Ju Julius Caesar and Caesar Augustus insisted on putting themselves in the calendar, moving September, the seventh, now it became the ninth month of the year. Octo, eighth month, became the tenth year. Novem, nine, became November, that is the uh, 11th month of the year, and then that Chem 10 became the 12th, thanks to Julius and Augustus. Okay, last meeting, we talked about the first declension nouns. Nouns that end in a, e, e, am, a, e, arum, is, as, is. A, e, e, am, a, e, arum, is, as, is, corresponding to nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and ablative cases. And just to review, nominative means it acts as the subject of the sentence. Genitive means it acts a as a possessive form. Dative is the indirect object, which is to whom or for whom something is done. Accusative case is the direct object, the receiver of the action. And then the fifth case, the last case, is ablative case, which corresponds to the um, object of participles like uh, with, by, from, under, below, uh, etc. Okay, so those are the first declension lessons we had last time. Uh, words that belong to that family of nouns ending in a, e, e, am, a, e, arum, is, as, is. And I, you remember, I gave you words like pirata. Pirate, pirate, piratam, pirata, pirate, piratarum, piratis, piratas, piratis. You will have to make sure you're able to give the word in all those ten forms. Five cases in singular, five cases in plural. Okay? That's why, you see, when you study Latin, you will have to uh, like be on your uh, on your toes. When you see a word, you will have to determine, is it singular or plural? Is it nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, ablative? Is it uh, therefore the subject or the direct object or the indirect object? That's why one of the fruits of studying Latin is it develops your discipline of the mind. It strengthens your mental discipline. And I always tell this to especially high school students that I would teach Latin to. Latin is a very powerful tool to help one develop discipline of the mind. And you will only realize it many years later that you're able to have that kind of discipline, mental discipline. It's because of Latin that makes you, when you encounter a word, um, you so many rules have to come and have to play in your mind and if you don't have the focus the discipline of the mind then you will have a hard time determining how to translate a word okay this is one of the most important fruits or effects of studying latin being able to develop discipline of the mind now i mentioned to you also that there are Five families of nouns. The first one we took up last week, that's the first declension nouns. Those are nouns that are declined 
or um, put into different forms according to the aem uh, arum is as is now let's go to a second family of nouns some nouns cannot be declined according to the aem a they have to be declined according to the us i o um o i o rum is os is and they are the masculine nouns yeah, i remember mentioning this in the first meeting um in latin every noun has a gender that is specific to that word um unlike in english okay there is masculine feminine neuter but it simply is masculine if it refers to a man or male feminine noun if it refers to a woman or female and then the rest is neuter if it refers to things it doesn't happen that way in latin specific nouns belong to a specific gender okay so us i o um o i orum is os is corresponding again to the nominative genitive dative accusative and ablative cases in singular and in plural just to repeat because this is how we learn things by repetition nominative if that word acts as the subject of the sentence genitive if it is in possessive form of the man of the woman of the girl of the uh, etc dative case is indirect object the word acts as indirect object in the sentence to whom or for whom like i gave money to the man that's dative case i did this for you for you is dative case in latin when we translate it accusative it's the receiver of the action i saw the man if you're going to translate the man into latin it has to be in the accusative and it's singular ablative by the man he was seen by the man he was shown around the house by the the by the mother by the mother when you translate it into latin has to be in the ablative case okay so us i o um o i o rum is os is so many things to memorize in latin like in any language now that's masculine nouns that belong to the second declension there are those nouns that belong to the second declension but are neuter in gender i'm going to show you different examples of words in masculine and in neuter in the case of neuter nouns we will decline them according to the endings um i o um o a o rum is a is um i o um o a o rum is a is again corresponding to the different cases in singular and then in the plural okay so let's look at examples of masculine nouns in latin a good dictionary a good latin dictionary will give you the word in mask in the nominative and genitive amicus amici friend in spanish amigo and yes many english words come from amicus amici like when you say amicable settlement okay somebody filed the case against you but you friend in a friendly way <laughs> you tried to settle it out of court amicable settlement you separated but you're amicable to each other it was a friendly separation that's from amicus amici and i mentioned to you that restaurant of uh, um amici restaurant that is latin for friends animus animi mind or spirit uh, by the way the nominative and the genitive are given in a good dictionary because it is in the genitive singular that you can know if a noun belongs to the first declension second declension third declension fourth declension or fifth 
declension. There are five families of nouns. Animus, animi. And yet, yes, that's where we get words like animation, animated. Not animal, because that is third declension noun, animal, animalis. <laughs> Campus, campi. Plain or field. And yeah, that's where we get the word in English, campus, meaning to say the field of the school. Caseus, casei, cheese. Cervus, cervi, deer. Chibus, TV, food. Deus, dei, god. Like chibus, chibi. That's why in Tagalog we have that word chibog, right? <laughs> food. Okay, now. If you're asked, decline animus, or sorry, amicus. When you're told to decline amicus, it means you're supposed to give amicus in all its ten forms. Following the us io um o, iorum is os is. Therefore, you will decline it according to amicus, amici, amico, amicum, amico. Amici, amicorum, amicis, amicos, amicis. Amicus, if it acts as a subject. Amici, of the friend. Amico, us i o. To the friend or for the friend. Amicum, the friend as a receiver of the action. Amico, us i o um o. Amico, by the friend, with the friend. Okay? That's how you determine. Now, those are singular. Amici, the friends, as a subject. Amicorum, of the friends. Ami, amicis, to the friends. Amicos, the friends, plural, as a receiver of the action. As in, I saw the friends. If you're going to translate the friends into Latin, it will have to be in plural and accusative. Direct object, amicos. And then amicis, again, if it comes with the pre the prepositions um, like uh, with, I went to the show with the friends, cum amicis, etc. Now, here are some more words. And you're going to see, really, oh, nga, so many English words that we got from Latin. Ecubus. Equi, horse. Yes, that's where you, where you get words like uh, equestrian. There is a play where Daniel Radcliffe <laughs> played the main actor. Equus is the title. And his role there is he's like the caretaker of a horse. So that's why the title of the play is Equus. Locus loci, place. Right. That's where we get the words like local, location, locate. Modus, modi, manner or means. Like the expression modus operandi. Ano, abong, ano ang modus nila? How do they function? How do they um, work things? Do the the work that they are expected to do. Mundus, mundi, is world. Oculus, oculi, is I. Yeah, that's where you got you get words like ocular inspection. Servus, servi, servant. More words. Okay, now let's go to neuter nouns. Adjectivum, adjectivi. Adjective. Bellum, belly, war. That's why when you say the person is belligerent, ay, war freak, <laughs> palaaway, belligerent. Castrum, castri, fort. In the plural, it's camp. Oppidum, oppidi, town or city. Triangulum, trianguli, triangle. Venenum. Poison, like venom, 
verbum, very word. That's why verbal or verbatim, word for word, these are they're all from this neuter nouns. Therefore, if you're asked to to decline, to decline uh, bellum, belly, now you're going to follow the neuter um i o um o aorum is a is. Therefore, you will have bellum, belly, bello, bellum, bello. Bella, bellorum, bellis, bella, bellis. That's how you will decline neuter nouns. Therefore, bellum, the war as a subject. Belly, of the war. Memories of the war came flooding in my mind. Belly. When you translate that into Latin, it will have to be belly. Bello. For the war. The soldiers uh, were preparing for the war. Bello. We hate war. We hate the war. Bellum. As a direct object accusative. The city was devastated by the war. Bello, ablative. Okay, so that's how we do the translation of the neuter nouns. Therefore, let's do a bit of a exercise here. We see the horses of the friends. How do we translate this now? The horses is accusative, the receiver of the action of seeing, and it's plural. Equus, equi, equo. You remember? Equus, equi, equo, equum, equo. Equi, equorum, equis, equos. Direct object of we see the horses. It will have to be in the ablative because it's plural. Equos. Of the friends. Plural, genitive, because it's possessive. Therefore, amicus, amici, amico, amicum, amico. Amici, amicorum, genitive, which is possessive, plural. Okay? Equos, amicorum, is how you're going to translate the horses of the friends. Let's... Look at, let me see. I give food to the god of the town. What case will be food? I give food. That's the receiver of the action of giving. And it's singular. Therefore, accusative case. It's direct object. It's the accusative case. Chibus, chibi, chibo. Chibum, accusative chibum. To the God, that's indirect object. And when you say indirect object, in Latin, what case is it? Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, or ablative? Dative, to whom or for whom something is done. Therefore, God in Latin is deus. The Dative case is Deus, Dei, Deo. That's the dative case. That's the indirect object. Okay? Chibum, Deo. Of the town. Oppidum, Oppidi. Genitive, singular. Therefore, translation, Chibum, accusative, Deo, Dative, opidi, genitive, singular, possessive. Another sentence, let's try it. They saw the eyes of the horse. How do you translate the eyes? It has to be in the accusative because it's the receiver of the action of seeing. They saw the eyes. And it's plural. Oculus, oculi, oculo, oculo, oculum, oculo. 
iorum is os. Accusative is os. Oculos. Of the horse. Genitive singular. Ecus equi. Equi. Therefore, translation for the eyes of the horse. Oculos equi. Okay? This last one. She praised the world. What case is the world? It's the receiver of the action of praising. It's direct object, therefore accusative. And what is world in Latin? Mundus. Therefore, mundus, mundi, mundo, mundum. Of the friends, plural, genitive. Amicus, ami, uh, amici, amici, amicorum, genitive plural. Therefore, mundum, amicorum is how you're going to translate the world of the friends. Okay? So, um, that's how we translate. Taking note of, is it singular or plural? Is it the um, subject of the sentence? Nominative. Is it in the possessive form? Genitive. Is it an indirect object? Dative. Is it the receiver of the action or direct object of the sentence? Accusative. Is it object of preposition? By, with, from? That's ablative. Okay. Let's just take one last sentence. Try working on it in your mind. What case? Let's just talk about cases. The poet wrote a poem about the war against the towns. <laughs> the poet is nominative case because it's the subject of the sentence and it is singular. Poeta. You rem now, you remember? Poeta, poete. That's first declension noun. You cannot decline it as Poetus, poeti, poeto, us i o o No. Poeta, poete, because it belongs to the first declension family. There, there cannot be um, like transferring to. If a noun belongs to a specific declension, you can only decline it according to that declension. In this case, a e e am a e arum is as is. Okay, so uh, that's a very important point to take note of. That's why when you look at the sentence um, and you're supposed to translate it, the, um, you look at every word determining what's the subject here, what is the direct object, what case, therefore, should this be in. Um, is it singular or plural? As I said, so many rules have to come to your mind. And that's when you start developing what we call <laughs> the discipline of the mind. Okay, now we have, um, can you imagine we're halfway through, and um, we will have to leave behind the aeam aearum is as is, us i o um o, i orum is as is, um i o um o, a orum is a is, and now let's first look at verbs. And if there are five families of nouns, there are four families of verbs. A verb may be first conjugation, second conjugation, third conjugation, or fourth conjugation. Let's go to the first conjugation verbs. And there are six tenses. I remember mentioning this in the introduction on day one. There are six tenses in Latin. Present. Imperfect, future, perfect, blue perfect, and future perfect. The last two, especially, well, for Tagalog speakers, they don't exist in Filipino or in Tagalog. That's why we, well, uh, typically, many Filipinos have a hard time using the blue perfect and the future perfect. So, but our interest for now is let's take a look at present tense. The simplest of all the tenses. 
And these are verbs that end in o as at, amus at is an. Like laudo. You remember? When you change the ending, you change the meaning. The same thing happens with the verbs. Laudo, laudas, laudat. Laudamus, laudatis, laudant. Corresponding to first, second, third person, singular, and then first, second, third, plural, which is really very much like what we know in English grammar. First person, ibig sabihin, the subject is I. Second person, subject is you. Third person, he, she, it, the man, the dog, third person. Okay? Therefore, when you see the word laudo, I praise. Laudas, you praise. Praise, as in praising. Laudat, he praises. Laudamus, we praise. Laudatis, you praise. And laudant, they praise. In Latin, present tense can be translated in three ways. I praise, I am praising, I do praise. Present tense in Latin can be translated in the simple present, present progressive, or the emphatic present. I praise, I am praising, I do praise. Voco, another um, word in Latin, which belongs to the first uh, first conjugation, to call, voco, vocas, vocat, vocamus, vocatis, vocan. Translated as, I call, you call, he calls, we call, you call, plural, they call. But I said there are three ways of translating. Therefore, voco. I call, I am calling, I do call. Vocas, you call, you are calling, you do call. Vocat, he calls, he is calling, he does call. Okay, so those are three ways of translating a word, a present tense in Latin. Simple present, present progressive, or emphatic present. Yes, voco. Vocas, vocat. That's where we get English words like vocation, calling, right? That's how we translate um, a vocation. Let's look at vocabulary words. Here are verbs that belong to the first conjugation family. Amo. Amo, amas, amat. I love or I like. Voco, I call. Occupo, with a double C. To seize or to capture. Puño, remember this, the pronunciation. It's not pugno, it's puño. Puño, puñas, puñat. Puñamos, puñatis, puñat. To fight. That's why in English, if a person is de de uh, described as a... Uh, Pugnacious. <laughs> it means he is uh, on a war path. Paro, parare. Paro, paras, parat. Paramus, paratis, parant. I prepare. I prepare for. Do. To give. I give. Do does that. Damus that is done. Navigo, navigas, navigat. Navigamus, navigatis, navigant. I sail. That's where we get word in words in English like navigation to navigate. Porto, porto, portas, portat, portamus, portatis, portant. To carry. That's why we have English words like portable. Import, deport, export. They all come from that stem. Porto, portas. And then, specto, spectas, spectat. I look at, you look at, he looks at. 
And yes, that's where we get English words like spectator, spectacle. Now, a good, you remember what I said earlier about nouns, a good dictionary will give the nominative and the genitive of the word and then the meaning. In the case of verbs, if your dictionary is a good dictionary, it will give the verb in the first and second principal part. Okay? Every verb, when you memorize a verb, you will have to memorize the four principal parts of the verb. Similar to what we did when we were children <laughs> studying English. It, eat, eaten, three principal parts. It, eat, eaten, walk, walked, walked, go, gun, went. You remember? In English, we would have to memorize three principal parts. In the case of Latin, there are four. The simple present, the infinitive, the perfect form, and then the participle form. And in this case, first conjugation verbs, the four principal parts are amo, amare, amavi, amatus. You will have to memorize every verb in its four principal parts. Well, with its four principal parts, because that's the only way we will be able to put it in the six different tenses. Okay, let's do a bit of uh, translation, therefore. Laudo, three, three ways of translating. I praise, I do praise, I am praising. Laudas, you praise, you do praise, you are praising. Laudat, he, he, or it or whatever subject, third person, you put in there. Praises. He praises, she praises, it praises. Emphatic. He, she, it does praise. Present progressive. He is praising, she is praising, it is praising. Laudamus. We. We praise, we do praise, we are praising. Okay? Let's... See if you can translate. <laughs> Try translating. Vocamus. Voco, vocas, vocat. To call. Amus, therefore, is we praise. We. Uh, sorry, call. Call. The um, word voco, vocas, is to call. Therefore, vocamus is we call. We are calling. Or we do call. Those are the three ways of translating. Punyat. O as at. Therefore, third person, singular. He fights. He is fighting. He does fight. Spectan. From specto. To look at. O as at. Amus at is and. The subject, therefore, is they. They are looking at. They do look at. They look at three ways of translating. Spectatis. Let's just finish first the uh, Latin to English. Specto, specta, spectat. Spectamus, spectatis. Second person plural. You plural are, lo uh, are looking at. You look at or you do look at. Portant. Third person plural. They carry, they are carrying, they do carry. Occupamus, to seize. We seize, we are seizing, we do seize. Okay? Now, let's go from English to Latin. Love is amo, amas, amat, amamus, amatis, amant. You plural, therefore, is amatis. Amatis. By the way, that's where we get English words like amiable, lovable, or loving. We are praising. To praise is laudo, laudas, laudat. Therefore, we, first person plural, laudamus. She loves. Amo, amas, amat. Third person, singular. We carry. 
Porto, portas, portat. Portamus. We carry, we do carry, we are carrying. He is fighting. Puño, puñas, puñat. Third person, he. We carry. Porto, portas, portat. Portamus. We carry. Portamus. Okay? You're getting the gist of it. Um, obviously, there is no other way but to go over many words, many vocabulary, and then declining and conjugate, declining nouns and conjugating verbs again and again, over and over, until we get the hang of it that when we see a word, we can immediately say singular or plural or um, first, second, or third person, and um, what tense is it in? You remember I said there are six tenses, four families of verbs, five families of nouns. <laughs> okay, so when you continue exercise, doing this exercise, you will be quick enough to say, paras, second person, singular, you prepare. Laudamus, first person, plural, we praise. Occupatis, you, plural, second person, plural. You seize, you occupy. Occupo, first person, I seize. Uh, this is parent, sorry. The um, auto, correct, put it as parent. But um, that's parent. They are preparing. I give. They love, amant. You call, they praise. And then let's put again English to Latin. Voco, vocant, da, uh, that, do das, that, he does give. They are seizing, occupant, they are looking at, spectant, she calls, vocat, you prepare, plural, paratis. Paro paras parat, paramus paratis. He fights, punyat. You, singular, carry, portas. Okay? You become um, faster when you, the more you uh, look at uh, exercises like that. Okay, uh, let's see if we can get into... Let's look at other, um, take a break a bit from, um, how do you call that? Take a break from verbs. And then here, I want to share with you some interesting things to uh, memorize <laughs> or to get to know. Let me see. I'll share my screen first. Latin terms that are used in, um, uh, sorry, I have to share the screen for a while. Huh? Um, okay, Latin terms that are used in writing because it's good to know. Uh -huh. Okay, so here are some Latin terms that are used in writing. You know, you will see many times the sick, right? It comes from the Latin word sicut, sicut, which means as is. Like, for example, when you're quoting somebody, including the grammatical errors, <laughs> then you will have to put in parenthesis sick, meaning to say, as is, you're quoting the person as is, including the grammatical errors. It's not that you are create, uh, are committing a grammatical error. You're just quoting someone, including the grammatical error. For example, the boy said he is its, and then you have to put sick there, meaning to say sickut as is. Let's go to another one. You see IE, right? IE. 
well, that actually stands for id est, which means it is, <laughs> that is. So, for example, in Latin, it means in the it means that is like when you are, um, how do you call this enumerating or identifying, um, the house voted on the bill. Uh, number 25, i.e., that is the bill regarding um, Jeepney modernization program. <laughs> Id est. That's the meaning of the i.e. Here's another one. I'm sure you've heard of this expression, Deus ex machina, which literally means God from the machine. It harkens back ancient Greek and Roman plays, like when, um, like as if there is an intervention of uh, the gods in order to put an end to the play, Deus ex machina. Today, it's still used in literature to describe a plot where an, an artificial, hindi bagay, parang pinilit ipasok just to put an end to the story or just to resolve a conflict. That's the deus ex machina. Sorry about that. Uh, that's the deus ex machina uh, as a literary term. Now, here's another one that you see many times in literature. E.G. E.G. stands for exempli gratia. You will see this often um, for the sake of example. Like, um, let's say, um, we were asked to bring very important documents, e.g. passport, and then you're going to enumerate some examples. Um, when you travel, you have to make sure you have all the necessary documents, e.g. Passport, uh, IDP, ID pictures, ID card, um, visa, etc. Which again is another Latin word or Latin from Latin, etc. Which actually means and others. So that's that has become an English word, right? When you see uh, etc. It stands for two Latin words, actually, et cetera, and others. Here's another one, ex libris. Many times at the back of the book, you will see there ex libris from the library. And then the name of the person who owns the library and therefore who owns the book, ex libris. Here's another one that you see many times in writings, ibid. Ibid, which actually is another abbreviated term. It means, I mean, it comes from ibidem. Ibidem, which literally means in the same place. So when you are um, making reference to a footnote, and then uh, in the next paragraph, you're still referring to, or you are still making reference to something that was quoted in that same book, you put ibid. It comes from the same place, ibidem. Here's another one, et ali, et al, right? You will see this also in writings, et al. Like when you have so many authors, instead of enumerating all the 10 authors responsible for the document that was written, you simply say, uh, Jose Delgado, um, Juan Ramirez et al., which really stands for et ali and others. Here's another one that you many times hear in English as a Latin expression, the alter ego, another I. <laughs> he is my alter ego, meaning to say he can take your place. Or uh, when you have... Mm, okay, so 
um, so many of those Latin terms that actually have become very much, not just very much, part of, but actually already part of the English language. Um, the last set I want to share with you before we end some more terms to remember. Here you go. Breakfast is prandium in Latin. Lunch is merenda. Remember the AMPM, Mary Diem. Ante Mary Diem is before the middle of the day. Merenda, when you hear endus and the endum in Latin, it expresses must. <laughs> in the middle of the day, you must have lunch. You have to eat. Even today, I know people who skip breakfast. They don't take breakfast. But you've got to take lunch. Must eat in the middle of the day. That's merenda, which in Spanish, we, we got merienda, the snacks in the middle of the day. But the, the real root of that is the merenda, which means lunch. And then cena, cena, right? We also hear that in in Spanish, merienda cena, but cena, cena really stands for dinner. A vegetarian is vegetarius. Cheers when you do the toast. You either say sanitas bona or benetibi. Benetibi, which really literally means well for you, good for you. Cheers. That's the expression. <laughs> when you ask the waiter to bring the bill, pretium fer, ferro fere in Latin is to bring, where we get so many English words. I mean, this is the root of so many English words. Anything that has fer, transfer, infer, prefer. Refer, defer, defer. They all come from this word fer, which means to bring. Bread is panis, which again, in, as, uh, in Spanish, we have the pan, as in pan de uh, whatever you are going to put inside the pan, the bread. But um, bread is panis. There's that very popular Gregorian chant, Panis Angelicum, uh, the bread of angels. Pa, pa, um, sorry, the um, Angelis. No? Panis Angelorum. Beverage is pozio. And that's why we have potion. Potable. They all come from the same. Coffee is Arabica or faba, Arabica, cofea, that is also Latin. Tea is thea. Juice is sucus, which really comes from, I mean, the English word sucrose, sugar, comes from there, sucus. Water is aqua. Again, uh, that has become so much a part of the English language that we have so many words. Um, with that stem, aqua, aqueous, aquatic, aquarium. Beer is cerevisia, very close to cerveza, but that really is um, also a Latin term. Sorry. And then vinum, and I remember giving you as one of the uh, terms to remember in vino veritas, in wine, there is truth which wine vinum really um, the grape vine for example that's the um, that's the root of um, why we have that word vine okay finally for today i want to give a few latin quotations to leave you by to make you see that that's true it's brilliant to memorize some Latin 
quotations <laughs> that you can drop in your speeches that will make you sound more erudite, more educated than usual, more learned, in other words. These, according to legend, were the last words of um, the crazy Herod, who, um, Nero, rather, Nero, uh, you remember, Nero, the crazy Roman emperor who burned Rome, and while Rome was burning, he was there in the, um, um, like the rooftop of the castle watching the Rome burn. And he wanted to burn Rome because he wanted history to begin with himself. So he wanted to destroy Rome and build a new city that he was going to call Neropolis. Unfortunately for him, the Romans, the um, mob took over and um, raised to the ground the, his palace and the crazy Nero was, according to legend, said to have uh, said, what an artist dies with me. Qualis artifex pereo. <laughs> A crazy way to, to go. Tantum religio potuit suadere malorum. Such evil deeds could the religion prompt, according to Lucretius. Fiat lux. Let there be light. This is from the, um, the, the Bible, the creation, where God says, let there be light. Fiat lux. Vultus est index animi. The face is the mirror of the soul. Bis vivit qui bene vivit. He who lives well, lives twice. Very brilliant uh, Latin quotation. Orandum est ut sit mensana in corpore sano. I'm sure you've heard of this um, quotation. Uh, sound mind in a sound body. That's actually from the author, the, the Roman writer, Juvenal, which in Latin is supposed to be pronounced as Juvenal. Mensana in corpore sano. It's a very popular uh, Latin quotation. Nulla possessio pluris quam virtus estimanda est. Translated as this Cicero, one of the greatest Roman orators. In fact, if you proceed with a Latin program, um, that's one of the things that will be studied. Ciceronian speech against Catiline. Uh, any any uh, student of Latin should know the cousque tandem abutere patientia nostra, the speech of C uh, C Cicero, the speech of Cicero against Catiline. No possession is to be regarded as more precious than virtue. Finally, mania es veritas et prevalebit, translated as truth is great, and it will be it will prevail. Okay, so the idea of studying Latin quotations, uh, understanding them, and then using them in your writing, in your speeches, that gives you a higher notch of uh, erudition. Precisely what studying of Latin is all about. It's uh, adding up to our knowledge, our um, level of education, I mean level of in the standard of um, showing what we know, what we have studied, and then, of course, with a touch of classical learning, going back to the Romans, who, from whom we owe many things related to culture. Okay, well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today uh, on this last uh, free session. <laughs> I might offer some more additional uh, sessions, especially on simply um, Roman culture and civilization, 
to enrich you, to enrich people with, um, well, classical learning, classical studies. I mean, some people were wondering, why, why am I offering this at this time in our history when there seems to be no need for this? There are many other more urgent things to attend to. Yes, um, as Jose Rizal would say, ang hindi tumingin sa pinanggalingan, <laughs> hindi makakarating sa pa patutunguhan. Well, we owe the Romans um, many things about our civilization and about our culture. And it's very brilliant always to look back to classical learning to enrich ourselves. Okay, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, hope to see um, some of you in our other future sessions. I think a number have already enrolled for the full course in January to March. And we will necessarily go back to the all the basics that we have also described here. But with the three uh, sessions I've given you, somehow, a little bit, you can actually now go, go and study on your own using the so many materials that are available online. Okay, now that you have a bit of background on sub uh, on uh, the nouns and a little bit of background on the verbs. Okay, thank you so much and hope to see you in our other future sessions. Bye, everyone. Good night. Have a great weekend.